Hello boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Folksbrow. Today we're going to carry on with the repair of the Sony subwoofer. I will link part one in at the end. Um, finally the components have arrived. So let's get on the bench and let's uh, have a recap and let's fix it. All right, here we have our board on the bench and if you remember from the previous video we went a bit down uh, the rabbit hole and we actually thought this uh, rectifier was gone and then I checked these capacitors and of course one of them has a DC short and the other one is a little bit out of tolerance uh, just a little bit about the circuitry obviously we have our rectifier down here and here we have our two uh, ob amps they are NJM4560 they are dual ob amps they are capable of uh, roughly driving 20 volt peak to peak at uh, 400 ohm load so that would explain why you have them uh, also very uh, they low noise and um, they have a good high gain wide bandwidth this little IC down here is a UPC 1237 it is the protector IC for this file for our amplifier so what it does it will drive this relay over here so that little IC over there is going to drive that and if there's any fault it will pull that relay out and that relay is actually what is going to connect to our speaker so that's what that is there so i just want to get my multimeter out and show you a thing or two ah come on So, when we are testing a capacitor, this is not what you should be using. In our case, I'm just going to switch it to, and let's see if we can get it in the screen here. I'm going to take one capacitor, I'm just switching it to resistance. And the problem is, is here I am measuring the DC resistance of the capacitor. Now that's fine if your capacitor has shorted. Uh, it's not fine to measure the ESR of the capacitor. So I'm just going to connect my multimeter up here and see what we read. Okay, so 700K. Let's go to the next one. And you can see this one is shorted. I'm not lying to you. Uh, I'm going to measure like that. So this capacitor that we're measuring is definitely gone. The first one that we measured, uh, this one, that gave us 700K. You see, that doesn't tell us much about the capacitor. So the meter that you actually need to use is an inductance meter. So let me just get that out. And the inductance meter will tell us a lot more. So here's our inductance meter. Uh, this meter will actually tell us a lot more about the state of the capacitor. So if I power it on, I'm just going to set it to a frequency of 100 hertz uh, well 120 hertz and we're going to test a capacitor and what we can see is it's telling me we have uh, 2.75 millihenry or 2700 uh, microfarads but that doesn't tell us too much about the ESR of the capacitor. So if I switch it to the ESR measurement mode, you can see it tells me it's uh, 
0.04 ohms obviously I would change uh, the frequency up to do that but I just want to go back to capacitance what you can see is this capacitor tells us it's got 2700 microfarad of capacitance the capacitor is actually rated for uh, where is it 3300 now we'll measure the next capacitor okay it tells us it doesn't read any capacitance if we go to the ESR tells me oh the ESR is fine but if we go to the DC resistance you can see that capacitor is bad this one over here we'll look at our good capacitor no DC well 33 meg so if you want to measure capacitors use something like this um, we know that the capacitor is rated for 2700 uh, it's reading 3000, uh, well it's rated for 3300 mic, we're reading 2700. It is on the border of our tolerance. So, yeah, let's, I have got uh, two new capacitors. Let's uh, solder them in. Right, so here are new capacitors. Uh, these are jack on but they are rated for 105 degrees Celsius where the other ones were rated for 85 degrees Celsius so we've got a higher temperature rating these are a little bit lower in the voltage rating the others are rated for 71 volts an obscure volt that you don't get anymore uh, these are rated, the new ones are rated for 63 volts so I'm just gonna flip the board around Let's see if we can do this online, well, behind the camera. Important thing to note with these capacitors, these, uh, if you actually look at the circuitry, they are connected in series. So there's the positive of the one, the negative of the other. The negative of the other runs straight into the positive of the next one which runs to the negative so what they've and you can see this whole big star point is coming into this tie in here so what they've done is they have created a nice uh, voltage divider in other words they've given us a split rail supply so importantly we need to get the polarity right put the older well the new capacity in let me just check that I have the polarity right yes because we definitely don't want this to blow up in our face. I'm just going to see if I can find something to... Uh -huh. Do I have anything that's high enough? <laughs> or just high enough? Okay, well what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tack the first leg in then. And we can move it right. Not a problem. Notice I'm not putting any hot snot or anything like that under the capacitor. I'm doing this, I'm soldering it in first and what I will do is, okay, I will solder or hot snot there's our capacitor in, so it will be skewed, so what I'm going to do I'm just going to heat that again and move it nice and straight Perfect. Maybe a little bit more in. And our capacitor is fine. So let's just do the other leg. So what you see, what I'm doing, is I'm heating the leg from one side and applying flux from the other and just pouring it as much as it needs. Then I pull the flux away and then the iron and it gives me a nice bright joint like that. So let's put the next one in. 
just make sure we've got the polarity right. Yes. And I keep getting the... <laughs> the heat transfer paste from the transistors on my hands. So again, same thing. We'll apply heat and solder flux. Okay, that's got quite a big hole. But anyway, let me just make sure it's mounted properly. There we go. It's straight. No gaps. And every time all I'm doing in between is I'm uh, just wiping my iron off on some Goldilocks type pad. And there we go, that's our two capacitors. Now I'm finished soldering, so I'm just going to, you see I keep wiping it off, I'm just going to put a little bit of a solder onto the tip, just so it keeps it wet. Don't let your soldering iron tips uh, run dry. So I'm just going to cut these leads off, clean up the board, and we'll come back and put the board into the subwoofer and see what it does. Uh, before we put the board in, I've just cleaned up the, the pads with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a, I just use a old toothbrush, nothing fancy there. I'm just going to take the focus lock off and turn it around. What you can see is there's a little bit of a gap there. You lock the focus. But you can see these capacitors are not exactly 100% stable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot snot around there, not underneath. I don't want to. I think these caps have some sort of, you know, we have the explosion vent on the top. But I think they also have a blowout vent on the bottom. So what I'm going to do... Uh, Obviously, before I give this back, is I'm going to put a bit of hot snot around there. In South Africa, if you're using silicon, do not use the clear silicon. Use um, the white silicon. Uh, the clear silicon has got some chemicals in uh, that will erode, first of all, the capacitive, and they become conductive over time, but it will also erode your solder work. Okay. So let's get the board in, let's have a look and we'll switch the power on together. Actually, sorry for that, before we put the board back in, uh, let's just check our rectifier down here. Remember that was giving us a dead short, so I've just switched my uh, meter to diode mode. So we're going from AC to positive, you hear the beep, the next AC to positive, you hear a single beep, not a continuous beep. We'll move over and we'll check the negative now. Our beep. And our next one, our beep. Okay, so our capacitors, the one that was shorted, not shorted anymore. We've replaced them with new ones. So let's get the board in. Right, here we are, the moment of truth. The board is back in. I can't, uh, I can. So I've just connected up all the connectors that go to it. Uh, this top one is for the uh, tone. Is it tone? Gain, whatever the hell they call it. Uh, this one is to drive the speakers. Our power comes in on the bottom and here it routes out to our power board. Uh, I've just replaced the fuse down there, so let's plug it in. 
and see what happens. Okay, what you should hear is a relay click. I'm going to try and get close to this. And there you go. I'll do that once more. It's off, switch on, delay and relay click. That was that protection chip, that uh, middle management chip down there. Okay, so that's another successful repair. Let's come back to the closeout with the costing and we can see what this actually cost. Right, that brings us to the end of another successful repair video. The costing of, of the repair. Uh, this is a Sony SA WP780. It's a relatively old active uh, subwoofer. I found a price on uh, eBay in US dollars if you convert it to South African rand. It's about 3,850 rand. Uh, the capacitors, excluding that, are roughly 3576. So that gives us 82 rand 25 cents with that. Uh, I'm basing the exchange rate on about 17.5 as we are today. The delivery of those capacitors would be 90 rand from uh, from uh, RS components because uh, you can't collect from them anymore. So I have to include a delivery cost. A miscellaneous and sundry cost 12 rand 50. So that gives us a total cost of the parts of 184 rand 75 with a service fee of 500 rand, which I think is fair. The total cost of the repair would have been 684 rand 75. That's roughly 18% of the equipment value. If our exchange rate wasn't so shit and uh, if RS components allowed you to pick up, obviously the delivery cost would have fall, fallen away. So you'd... Uh, you could have knocked 90, 90 rand off of there. So instead of 684, it would have been, for, let's say, 590 even. Five, yeah, 594, 75. Um, would it have been worth it? I don't know. I'm not a sound person. You know, the capacitors we did put in are better quality than what we took out. Uh, they're higher temperature rated. Uh, so this... Uh, subwoofer should last for if we're not going anywhere near the temperatures uh, it should last for at least i'd say another good 10 years possibly 15 uh, up to the rating of the capacitors because there's nothing really in there that you can stress except the trans transistors the push pull transistors i did put a bit of a uh, silicon grease on the back uh, for the heat transfer compound so I have made it brand new. So there's nothing really in here that can fail anymore, except capacitors again. So yes, total cost, or the total cost of the repair, 684 and 75. As always, I hope you found this fun. I hope you found it entertaining. Um, as always, take care, be safe. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.